Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Good morning, Memorial. Good morning. Oh, we're so sleepy. Good morning, Memorial. All right, please stand up and join us in our first hymn, How Great Thou Art, number 77. We'll sing verse 1, 2, and 4. risen Christ is with us. Amen? You may be seated. seated. Good morning and welcome to Memorial United. I'm Ron Beaton, one of the pastors, and it is a joy to be with you as we worship God on this Sunday, on this day of resurrection. I want to welcome everyone who's here, but extend a special welcome to any guests who are with us today. If you are a guest, we hope that you'll fill out one of the Connect cards in the attendance pad as it's passed down the row, um, or you can also scan the QR code that's on the back of your bulletin, and that'll let you be able to do that online. We're particularly glad you're here, and we've got a gift for you on your way out the door. I also want to welcome all of those who are joining us on our YouTube or Facebook live stream. We're glad you're joining us as well. If you want to get connected, we hope you'll go to our website, memorialumc.church, and click on the Connect tab. Let's continue our worship and with our opening prayer.
Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles we ask. and prophets. And our ignorance in asking, have compassion on our weakness and give us those things which for our unworthiness we, we dare, dare not, not and for our blindness, blindness we cannot ask. ask. Through the, Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for our children's moments. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Hi. Hey, buddy. Hi there. Good morning. All right. How are you all today? You all doing good? Good. So today, we're going to hear a story about Jacob, and you know what happened? He married the wrong person. Can you believe that? Isn't that a crazy story? But you know what? He married her, and, and even though it wasn't who he expected to be married to, he, he, she was exactly who Jacob needed, right? So I wanted to know, do you all ever think, man, um, do you ever think, man, my mom and dad or my parents, sometimes they don't do the things that I expect them to do, right? Do you ever think that? Do you ever think like, oh my goodness, I thought they were going to give me all the candy in the drawer, right? Does that ever happen? No, it doesn't happen. Normally, they do things that sometimes you don't want, and sometimes it's things that aren't what you would like things to be, but you know what? God always knows what's best for us, right? God does things that sometimes are hard and sometimes challenging, but if you trust in God, things will always be beautiful, right? Yeah, she gave you something a little bit different, but it was probably just what you needed, right? <laughs> right? Yeah? All right, so can you all trust in God to give you what you need, even if it's different than what we think we need? Absolutely. Yeah? Okay, let's put our hands together and repeat after me. Dear God, we give you thanks that we can trust in you, not giving us always what we want, but giving us what we need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you all for coming up, and you all can go with Miss Melody if you want. Our special today is going to be the amazing and wonderful Christina Kinsey, who will be playing the old rugged cross.
for illumination. Will you please bow as I read the prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. Old Testament lesson from Genesis 29, 15 through 28. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go in to her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter, Leah, and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid, Zelpah, to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave, her, gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Our gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson today. Did I step on your toes? Yeah, all right. Oh, it's a, it's a little bitty. Little bitty. We're going to sing a hymn first. Everybody, please stand for 577 to uh, God of Grace and God of Glory. We'll sing verse 1, 3, and 4.
Now we'll do the gospel lesson. <laughs> Again, I said, I'm sorry. The gospel lesson is Matthew 13, 31 through 33, and 44 through 52. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is, it is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all, it, all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he comes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes, and he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. God's word. Thanks be to God. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So here is the story you've all been waiting for, right? We're continuing our sermon series, Father Abraham and His Many Sons. This is the longest sermon series I think I've ever preached. Um, I'm grateful for Pastor Chris, who stood in my steed last week while I was out of town and did a fantastic job. This is the third week with Abraham and Sarah's grandson, the son of Isaac and Rebecca, the wily and sly Jacob. Jacob gets more attention in Genesis than any other character. The chicanery for Jacob starts early. You may remember the scripture reading from a couple of weeks ago when the twin brothers Jacob and Esau, they're wrestling in their mother's womb, and then Esau is born first, and then while in the birth canal, Jacob is still grabbing on to Esau's heel, trying to be the firstborn, right? From birth, Jacob was always trying to get ahead. He took advantage of his brother's hunger. Remember that? And he traded a bowl or like red soup for a birthright, which seemed a little lopsided of a trade. Then conspiring with his mother, Jacob tricks Isaac, his father, who was blind at that point, into thinking that Jacob was Esau by putting on some hairy goat skin on his arm. And then consequently, Isaac erroneously gives Jacob the family blessing instead of Esau. Jacob is a deceptive kind of fella, right? No surprise, after all of this, Esau wants to kill Jacob. So last week, you learned about when Rebekah and Jacob tried to flee Haran and stay with his uncle Laban, right? Stay with his uncle Laban. He's on the lamb from his brother. He's fearing for his life. He's scared and alone, and he's sleeping in the desert with scorpions, and all he has for a pillow is a rock. And then Jacob has this dream. There's this ladder that connects the terrestrial to the celestial, and angels are going up and down this ladder. And God comes to Jacob in this dream and says, You are Abraham. You are a son of Abraham. And uh, promises that he's going to be with Jacob wherever he goes, and that his children will be a blessing, his, will bless his descendants forever. Then we have this scripture from Genesis today. Jacob arrives at the well in Haran, and you may remember from a few weeks ago that when Abraham's servant went to go find a wife for Isaac, that I said the well in town was kind of like 
the ancient Near East equivalent of going to a bar to find a date, right? Well, Jacob has arrived at the well, and he strikes up this conversation with the guys around the well. Do you know Laban, son of Nahor? We do. Well, how's he doing? Is he well? Yeah, he's doing good. In fact, here comes his daughter Rachel now with her sheep. And then with just a quick glance, Jacob's heart skips a beat. His jaw hits the floor. For Jacob, it was love at first sight. The saxophone part to Careless Whisperer by George Michael starts playing in the background. (laughs) He puffs out his chest. He lowers his voice. And he quickly turns to impress this beautiful woman. In front of the well, there's a large stone, right? And and they would put the stone there to protect the water. And it was so large that it, it normally took, you know, at least two or three men to move this stone. So they would try to, everybody would water their animals at one time so they didn't have to keep moving this stone. Well, Jacob saw his opportunity. He rolls up his dirty sleeves and this mama's boy who likes to sleep in tents and fancy tents and cook somehow summons the strength to move this large stone all by himself. And following the show of strength and feeling extra manly, I suppose, he goes over to Rachel and he greets her with a kiss and he introduces himself. And then Rachel turns and runs off to tell her father Laban about this encounter. Laban runs to Jacob and gives him a big hug and says, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. Jacob and Laban, they become chummy with one another. Jacob sticks around for a while, working for an entire month before Laban finally says, look, just because you're my nephew doesn't mean that you should work for free. Tell me, what what shall your wages be? Jacob, he knew exactly what he wanted, right? He, He didn't want money. He didn't want a salary. He didn't want a share of the property. He didn't want a dozen head of cattle or a camel. He wanted to marry Laban's daughter, Rachel. She was the one that made his heart skip a beat. The scripture goes on to say that Laban had two daughters. The older was Leah, and the younger was Rachel. And uh, Then it says, Leah's eyes were... And then there's this Hebrew word that is notoriously difficult, if not impossible, to translate with certainty. And it could mean that her eyes were strange-looking, or it could also mean that they were gentle which was kind of a way of saying, well, that was her only redeeming quality. But Rachel, Rachel was graceful and beautiful. However it was to be translated, the the implication is clear. Rachel is the pretty one. Leah was not. Jacob says, I'll give you seven years of labor if I can take Rachel as my wife. And Laban says, better you than some other loser, and agrees. (laughs) In a lovely turn of phrase, the next text says, those years, quote, seemed to Jacob but a few days because of the love that he had for Rachel. Oh, how romantic, right? Seven years passed. Jacob is eager to finally claim his bride. Verse 21, Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. My time is completed, and I want to make love to her. So much for subtleties. Laban throws a party, a wedding feast. It's time to eat and drink and be merry. And they drink, and then they drink some more, and and then they drink a little bit more. And then after the wedding feast, the newlyweds go and do what newlyweds do. I apologize for whatever questions, parents, you may receive. But the sun comes up, and as the morning light shines into the window, and Jacob looks upon his unveiled bride's eyes, he realizes, I've seen those eyes somewhere before. Those weren't Rachel's eyes. Lo and behold, it was Leah. Laban had done the old switcheroo. Jacob storms off to Laban. What have you done? I worked seven years to marry Rachel, not Leah. And then, irony of irony, Laban says, what do you mean, Jacob? You know the rules. The firstborn has rights and privileges. 
I don't know how it works in the country that you come from, but in this country, the firstborn gets married first. <laughs> Irony of ironies. The chicanery. The trickster had been tricked. He was given a taste of his own medicine. One week later, Jacob has also given Rachel in exchange for a further seven years of servanthood. And the story is set up for the generation of the 12 tribes of Israel. So as I was preparing for my sermon this week, I was reminded of a professor I had in, at Duke. He's an ethicist. He's kind of a controversial figure, Stanley Hauerwas. But he wrote this book, and he said, quote, You always marry the wrong person. <laughs> you always marry the wrong person. There's this idea, right, that comes from like rom-com movies in the 90s, that happiness and fulfillment are found when you marry the one. If we look close enough, we will find the person that we are destined to be with, the one who makes us whole. But Howard Law said the trouble is we marry the wrong person. And that's because we don't know who we're marrying. We just think we do. When you get married, you think you know somebody, right? But then you go along and you discover you don't know that person at all. You discover all of their idiosyncrasies, their disgusting habits, the secrets that they failed to mention to you before they got married. Or even if by some wild chance you happen to marry the right person, just give it a while. <laughs> he or she will change. You're not the woman I thought I married, someone may say. You think you've married one person, but lo and behold, it was Leah. The real question I think we should be prepared to answer before we get married is, are you willing to do what it takes to love the stranger that you're about to be married to? What's also fun to think about is, in marriage, your spouse has got to figure out, are they prepared to marry the stranger to whom they're about to be married to. We're humans, right? We're always grabbing heels and selling soup. We're cheeky, sly, sneaky, manipulative. We change, we grow. We marry somebody with a head full of thick black hair in their 20s, and then by the 30s, it's thinning and gray. <laughs> you think you marry Rachel, but lo and behold, you've got Leah. But this isn't just about marriage, right? Friendships, too. I think of the people that I thought I really enjoyed being around. People I look forward to golfing with or eating with. They're funny. They're easy to talk to. We have so much in common. But then we talk about politics. <laughs> they believe what? I didn't know what to do. I, I thought I was talking to one person, and lo and behold was Leah. <laughs> church too, right? You probably came to Memorial United Methodist Church thinking, finally, a church that is beautiful. It was just the church you thought you wanted. But now that you're in, now that you're vested, you realize you thought you had the pretty church, but it's really the ugly church. There's the parishioner that came to me and said, preacher, you know, we've got some hypocrites in this church. <laughs> Really? Please, give me their names and numbers. It turns out it's not the church you thought. You went to this beautiful church, and lo and behold, it was Leah. Pastor Chris likes to say, the church is not full of hypocrites. There's always room for one more, right? <laughs> Even God might fit into this role. You think you're going to wake up with this God that's everything you dreamed, but it turns out it's not the God you thought you married. It turns out that the God you thought that was so beautiful has, well, kind of strange eyes. You thought God was going to be the pretty one, Rachel, but lo and behold, it was Leah. You think God is going to be the benevolent God who makes you feel better about yourself and keeps you from getting sick and helps you find your car key. But instead, you've got the Leah God, Jesus, who you're going to have to learn to love, even though they demand things of you that make you uncomfortable, 
that are risky, that are hard. You think you got the pretty one, but you got the ugly one. Lo and behold, it was Leah. But if you keep reading the scripture, you'll discover at the end of the day, Leah is the one who's the hope for the future. I wonder if it was Leah we needed all along. Not what you thought you needed. Not what you wanted, but what you really needed. I wondered if we married the wrong person, but it turns out that loving Leah is more life-giving than we could ever hope. You think Jesus knew what he was getting into when he married the church? <laughs> We're not the pretty ones. But Jesus died to prove his love for us. And that's as beautiful as it gets. For that, I'm grateful. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm the faith of our baptism with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us now offer our tithes and our offerings. You can give in one of three ways. You can give in the plate as it's passed around. You can text your offering to 73256 and then put in the message Memorial UMC, one word in the amount you want to give. Or you can go to our website, memorialumc.church, and click on, click on the Give tab. Let's give of ourselves to God.
Almighty God, accept these financial offerings. May they be used by your church for your glory and honor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we enter into a time of prayer, um, we're going to do something that I like to do from time to time. We'll come to a point in the prayers of the people where I'll allow you all to lift up the names of those who you want to pray for. Maybe just offer a name or something very brief. Um, and then after some time has passed, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and we'll all say, hear our prayer. Let's give it a try. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Most good and gracious God, we give you thanks that you are not the God that we think we want, um, but you are the God we need. The God who is making all things new. The God who is drawing us to himself. We give you thanks that you have claimed us, um, entered into a covenant with us, and are moving in our lives to make us more at one with you, so that we might love you with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to be those who love you through acts of worship and devotion, and love neighbor through acts of justice and compassion. We also pray for all of those in our hearts and minds this day. For all of those who are in need, for those who are sick, for those who are lonely. Especially we pray for those who we lift up before you now. Lord, in your mercy. And now with boldness and confidence we pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As I send you forth from this place to love God and love others, um, I encourage you to take a look at the back of the bulletin to several announcements and ways that you can be involved in doing so. Uh, a couple things I do want to highlight. The first is, um, if you haven't noticed, there's a gnome out 
there that's kind of like Santa Claus on the beach, um, that is because of Seasons of Hope. Um, normally, we, you may know about our Bear ministry that we do in December, um, but we do a lot of ask. There's always a lot of asking for things in December. So this year, they're doing Christmas in July, um, and all of those, the proceeds that we have for the Seasons of Hope go to help make sure that kids have an enjoyable Christmas um, when that time rolls around. The other thing is on Wednesday from 6.30 until 8.30 this Wednesday, I expect to see you because we've got, it's going to be Methodist Night at the water park. I know you all are pumped. I'm excited. Um, so bring your kids, your grandkids, some random kids off the street. We don't care. Um, it'll be a really fun time um, out at the water park on Wednesday night. Go forth from this place. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God who is the God we need, not the God we want, the God who is making all things new, go forth in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.